Winter's back, everybody. That means it is time for these delicate little fingers to walk you through another cold weather glove roundup. That's it. If you're like me and tired of riding around with your fingers in your armpits every chance you get because the cold temperatures have these little sausages stiff and frozen, you're gonna enjoy today's video, so stay tuned. Let's check out these gloves. All right, folks, so if you have been around the channel, chances are you're familiar with these little bitch mitts and how cold and frosty they get as soon as those temperatures dip south of 60 degrees. I know I'm a wuss, but if any of you guys out there also struggle with cold fingers or have to ride in cold climates, I think you're gonna enjoy today's roundup. We've got Endura, a couple of gloves from Fox, Hand Up, Liat, PO, POC, POC, and 100%. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through fit features and uh, kind of the ideal temperatures that I found these gloves to work best in. Before we get into that, please, I'm gonna ask you one quick favor. It's not gonna cost you a dime, although we do really appreciate all those super thanks fans out there. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to us as we try to crest that 75,000 subscriber mark. You can do it, you can help us. Hopefully I'm gonna help you. See how that works? Mutually beneficial, I like it. Okay, first up, we're gonna lead off with the Endura Single Track Windproof MTB Gloves. <clears throat> These things retail for $44.99. Um, they are a Velcro enclosed, I wouldn't say minimalist, but they're definitely gonna be on the, the slimmer, thinner, you know, kind of more mild, moderate temperature winter glove. Um, there's a few things I really like about this glove and a few areas I think it could be improved, but um, like I said, it's, it's got a windproof soft shell on the back. It has some, uh, a little bit of knuckle padding and protection here. It's not a lot, but just enough if you hit like a branch or something on there. I wouldn't say it's really that protective, but hey, when it's cold and you bust your knuckles on something hard, it, it definitely hurts. A uh, little reflective hints on the glove. Um, again, a little bit of insulation up top, but they are gonna be definitely more of like a thinner minimalist glove. There's a couple little perforations, uh, kind of holes here for some breathability, which you may or may not want in a winter glove. But again, that kind of shows you what temperature range this is. Uh, again, I have chronically cold hands. So for me, this glove came out halfway through a ride, which would, you know, when it started to creep up into the higher 30s, like 38, um, or if I was starting a ride at 40 degrees or up. Uh, this is kind of where I found the Endura to be really in its sweet spot for me. Uh, admittedly, like I said, my hands are colder than most, but <clears throat> um, I think warm-blooded folks could probably get away with uh, riding these things into the 30s, um, but a solid glove all around. I do like the thin bar feel uh, or thin palm for the great bar feel that this, this gives. Um, it doesn't feel like a winter glove, right? A lot of times a winter glove will feel super thick, bulky. You'll, you'll have some slip um, when you're trying to grab that bar and get some good feel. I do like the kind of rubber grippers strips here on the fingers and the palms. Areas that I don't love, this uh, Velcro strip here is, is really thin and the landing pad, I guess we'll call it, right? The hook and loop closure system is also pretty thin. So it just doesn't have a lot of purchase when you're trying to close that thing up. Now, admittedly, I never had it come undone while I was riding, but it just, you can't really mindlessly do it. You have to kind of look and make sure you line that thing up because it's, it's a pretty thin window there. Um, that being said, you know, there's also a lot of cold air that can get in there, uh, but it does make it easy to get them on and off, especially when it's cold and you need to do it uh, a lot because these gloves don't work, at least with my cell phone and a few others that I tried. Um, maybe the screen protectors don't work, but I don't really know anyone who doesn't have a screen protector. So that would be kind of the only real downsides to the glove. Other than that, a solid option, like I said, in that kind of, high 30s to 40 degree range, the Endura uh, single track windproof glove. 
45 bucks, not a bad deal there. So next up, we're gonna move to Fox. Um, I have two gloves here because they're kind of on, I don't wanna say opposite ends of the spectrum, but a little different demands, I guess. Uh, but I have them both here because I love them both. Now this one here is their Ranger Water Glove, which retails for $44.95. Also a pretty thin, minimalistic glove. Uh, it does have a waterproof Axe Suede Palm uh, DWR finish and not a lot, well, no real insulation uh, to be fair, but it is a warm glove. And I think because it's a waterproof glove, it just, it doesn't breathe super well, which keeps it warmer. Um, I've been able to ride this glove, which is a pretty thin glove into temperatures that I, I didn't think I would stay comfortable in, um, but it does a really good job. I, I like this glove a lot. It's not something I'm gonna wear below 40 degrees personally, but um, you know, kind of in that 42, 44 degree range, 48, I can definitely find myself reaching for this glove. I pack it a lot. If it's not cold, but kind of like misty or some rain's coming down a little bit, uh, this is a great option because you don't have like the bulk of say like the 100% brisker hydros, which are a waterproof glove, but really thick and bulky. So with this, you kind of get the feel of a thin normal mountain bike glove, but with some water protection and some added warmth because uh, it just doesn't let a lot of air go through in or out. Um, now, going to the opposite end of the spectrum here, uh, I would say possibly the warmest glove of the entire group and maybe even my new favorites. Um, if you guys have watched many of our annual cold weather glove roundups, I have long said that the, the Dekine white knuckle glove has been my favorite go-to cold weather glove. However, Dekine in all their wisdom has decided to stop making the best winter mountain bike glove ever. I'm hoping it comes back. Um, but that glove had a great, nice, thickly insulated top with a really thin palm. This glove does it. Here's the, the thing, okay? This is actually their UTV side-by-side -side driving glove. So um, this is what Fox calls their Legion Drive Thermo. And you'll notice the little bit of difference is that the, the silicone gripper strips on the palm are designed for a steering wheel, right? Like, so it's not quite a handlebar, like mountain bike experience, but I didn't find that to be too much of a drawback for me. Um, and uh, I was willing to make whatever little sacrifice that was with too much grip uh, for the warmth that these gloves offer. I don't know that I have really ever said that a glove's too hot or too warm. This might be the glove <laughs> that, that is that. So uh, I love this thing. If you're moving and your heart rate is elevated at all, this thing is going to heat up very hot. Uh, they retail for 35 bucks, so they're pretty dang affordable. They use an insulated closed cell foam up here on the top of the hand. Um, a single layer Clarino palm, really cool. I'm a big fan. I would love it if the cuff came up a little bit higher, but you know, that lower cuff also makes it a little bit nicer for when you're on the bars. But again, I guess if you've got a long sleeve jack or jersey and then a jacket on, you'll probably be fine, but it would be nice to see that cuff come up a little bit. But otherwise, this is, uh, I don't wanna spoil it, but if you're regularly riding in cold temps, like 30 to 40 degrees, or you're like me and you got cold hands, the Legion Drive Thermo. You can see right here on the side, it says UTV. So there, there's a little tip for you guys. They don't have this glove in their mountain bike lineup that I have found. Of course, that could change for 2023, but uh, yeah, UTV gloves, guys. Check it out. <clears throat> so next, we're gonna move into a little bit more lighter duty, um, milder climate glove. Uh, some might call it a spring glove or the SoCal winter glove, um, but this is from Hand Up. <clears throat> it is called the Cold Weather Glove. How about that? Uh, apparently, they've just come out with a new version called the Colder Weather Glove, uh, which I will definitely be reaching out for to try because um, I have cold hands. 
So these things, we just actually did a long-term written review up on the website a few weeks back, so we'll link that down below. Uh, a really solid option though. I was very impressed for how thin it is. It's a single layer insulated glove, 34 bucks. Um, I was really impressed at how warm these things kept my hand. I really wasn't expecting a ton uh, because they just feel so thin and kind of basic. Um, you know, it's a $34 glove. I was like, man, I don't know. But it really did do a good job of keeping my hand warm. Again, I would say 40 degrees up, right? I think, I think their website kind of calls it a 38 to 50. Um, <clears throat> depending on you and your hands, you could probably get it down into that 38 zone. Um, and I did, but I liked it sitting at about 40 and above for sure. Um, or if I was climbing a lot, right? And my blood was getting pumping and not just hopping out for shuttle runs or something like that. But uh, <clears throat> a very cool glove. <clears throat> uh, a couple of things I do want to point out specifically. One, it's got a full thumb terry cloth design, which I love. Huge fan of this because when you're riding and it's cold out, uh, snotty noses abound, right? So being able to wipe off <coughs> that snot is really awesome. There's a lot of real estate on both these hands, so <coughs> there's a lot of place to put all that snot. Um, it, it is comfortable though. Uh, if you do get sweaty or get splashed with mud and you need to wipe off, <coughs> uh, very cool. A little bit of a criticism I have with the glove, when I first put them on, <clears throat> I wasn't super impressed. And now, you know, even now when I put them on amongst all these other gloves, you can definitely feel the stitching in the seams here between uh, all the fingers. When I'm standing here moving around, you know, it's a thing. I can feel it. <clears throat> it's not as refined or nice. Again, it's 10, 20-ish dollars cheaper than every other glove. Once you start riding, I don't notice it, right? Cause you're focusing on uh, the trail ahead of you or um, you know, a lot of other things going on uh, down the trail instead of little seams that are stitched on the side of your glove. But <clears throat> that would be something that I would like to see improved in the future. But overall for 34 bucks, Hand Up did a really good job with that. Next, we're gonna move into the offerings from Liat. They have two that I really like. Uh, one is the 2.0 wind block glove and uh, the other is this 2.0 sub zero glove. Um, these are a couple years old. Uh, so if you go to the website, they won't look exactly like that, but or like this. Uh, however, that's a testament to how well these gloves last and how much I like them. I've, I don't keep lots of things for two years or three years or more, right? Like we're constantly getting new stuff. So when I do find things that work well for me, I do tend to keep them squirreled away. These gloves are on that list. So uh, both the wind block and the Sub-Zeros -Sub retail for $47.99. The Sub-Zero here um, has a three layer upper that is uh, slightly insulated. Um, the Micron grip that Liette has on their palm is waterproof, waterproof and I would say the best feeling palm possibly in all of mountain bike glove history. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know, I might be exaggerating, but I love the Micron grip that these things come with. It is super comfortable, it is a great feel and uh, does a pretty good job in all conditions of keeping traction. So again, the Sub-Zero is their thicker, slightly more insulated glove. I really like this in kind of that mid to upper 30s temperature range. If it gets colder than that, I do find myself going for a thicker glove like that uh, UTV Legion or the 100% Briskers, which we'll get into next, or my trusty old uh, Dekine white knuckles, which are just slowly, slowly dying. I only save those for the coldest of days because you can't find them anymore, but um, this Liat Sub-Zero is definitely a really good option for, you know, guys with warmer hands or girls with warmer hands that are riding in those 30-ish degree temps, um, or if you're kind of in that mid-30 range uh, and want something that is insulated. If you want to ride something thinner, a little more minimalist, like, you know, in the 40s up to cool 50s, the, the wind block Liats are awesome because they are extremely, extremely thin. Like they feel like a spring or summer glove, um, but they just have a wind block treatment on them. 
Um, so definitely check those out. I wear those a ton on my dirt bike when the temps are cool, but just because you're moving so much uh, clutching and throttle and all that, that like my hands get a lot warmer on the dirt bike, especially because they're behind those hand guards. Um, <clears throat> so the wind block's a great option as well. Um, just depending on your temps. Next, we're gonna get into the POC Essential Road Soft Shell Glove. Uh, <clears throat> interesting that these are a road glove, but um, nevertheless, uh, they hold up on a mountain bike too, as you can see by the mud and dirt that has dried on them. Um, these are a little bit tighter to get on, as you probably could tell. <clears throat> they do have a pretty large cuff. They've got this pull tab here. Uh, the tall cuff is really nice because it offers more warmth and protection, goes up inside the jersey or the, the jacket. Um, <clears throat> it is a, a pretty thin, comfortable glove for the most part. Not as comfortable as the Liats uh, or the Foxes, I would say, but uh, a little bit more comfortable in the hand ups for sure. So in typical POC fashion, these are the most expensive gloves in the roundup at $60. Uh, they have a windproof soft shell back with, um, it has like a, a kind of a little bit of a, of a layer in between. It's thin, but it, it gives a little bit of insulation between the hand and the back of the glove, which is nice. Um, and they do have some, a little bit of like kind of silicone grippers here on the fingers and on the edge of the palms. Not a lot, but just enough. Uh, They've got a much finer, thinner, and shorter terry cloth thumb compared to the, the hand up gloves, which is kind of more like a, your old favorites, you know, towel. And uh, this is kind of more like a microfiber almost. It's, it's really nice feeling. Um, and uh, it will definitely do a good job of wiping away sweat, uh, mud, water drops, or snot. Uh, so these gloves are touchscreen compatible. Um, however, there's a little bit of a, kind of a nuance to them, right? The, the gloves sort of have like this curved fit, right? Like you can tell like I'm just relaxing my hand and the, the way the gloves are built, they're wanting to sort of already curve in, which is great for riding. You know, it gives the gloves <clears throat> uh, or it resists giving a lot of bunching seams, folds inside the glove when you're riding on the grips. The downside to that is that when you straighten your hand up, uh, one, you're fighting the tight fabric on the inside here, but also the construction of the fingertips uh, means that the material here that is touch screen friendly is a little bit shorter so that when you go to poke your phone or slide your screen around with the end of your fingertips, <clears throat> it doesn't really work. It's more on the bottom, which means you're, you're able to unlock and move things around with your, the pad of your finger. But if you're trying to like type a text and get precise, it gets a lot harder because you're not able to use the point of your finger. Uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of nitpicking here, I know. I think if you've got a glove on, you just need to be able to answer the phone in a hurry or, or unlock it to get that sweet Instagram shot. And uh, if you are gonna be you know, replying back to emails, you'll probably wanna pull that glove off anyways. But um, it is touchscreen compatible, like I said, on the bottom of the finger. So overall, <clears throat> a pretty solid glove. Um, it works well. I've definitely been out in some muddy, wet conditions. It does a pretty good job holding up to light, <clears throat> light water exposure. Um, at 60 bucks though, I don't know that I would say it's like that much better. You know, I, I, like I wouldn't find myself voluntarily wanting to spend that extra money to buy these gloves compared to some of the others that cost half as much. But um, you know, obviously there's a lot of POC fans out there and uh, these are a solid option. They perform well and do everything they need. Uh, I just think there's options that do it as well for less. So last up, we will be moving to the 100% Brisker Hydros. These gloves normally retail for $44.50. They are currently on sale for $35. I don't know how long that'll last or if it's a new price, <clears throat> but either way, that's a pretty sweet deal. So the briskers are, uh, this is the hydromatic version, which means it's their waterproof version. Um, these are definitely warmer than their non-waterproof versions because they are not as breathable. They trap in heat uh, and they do not let anything in because there is kind of that inner layer. So there is a lightly insulated soft shell top uh, and a waterproof breathable insert. Um, that is 
I don't know, we'll probably be able to show you guys here, but um, you can kind of see it's sewn in around the cuff. And the good thing about it is, is it makes these gloves really, really warm. The downside to that is um, out of all the gloves in this test, they don't have the best uh, bar feel. And obviously the reason for that is, right, you've got two layers inside the glove. So when you're trying to grab, you can feel those two layers moving independently of them, of each other. We're talking, you know, millimeters, right? But like, if you're that guy who really has to have the most in tune feel with your bike, granted, you're already gonna be making compromises in the winter because it is cold and you need to have hand protection, right? But um, yeah, it, it's something to note and is honestly my only real criticism with this glove. Uh, and it's not even a huge one, right? Like, again, I'm, I'm trying to find things to point out just so not every glove is the best glove in the world, right? So um, <clears throat> I will just say it is noticeable. You can absolutely adapt and still ride it, but you will notice the first couple of times you go out, just a little bit of squirm and play between the glove and your grip. <clears throat> that being said, I, Love these things. I wear them a lot. Um, I don't know how they still look so clean, to be honest, because I've cleaned mud out from the bike. It, it probably has something to do with this single layer PU palm, right? It's, it's pretty resistant. Uh, and I think it just sheds and cleans itself as you use it and other bits of moisture and wetness come around. Um, <clears throat> it's somewhat works with some phone screens I found, uh, depending how thick your screen protector is or how sensitive you have your your, your screen to. Um, the thumb works a little bit better because it has kind of like that little bit of a kind of a leather palm there that, that conducts better. But um, overall, <clears throat> it's enough to get you into the phone and what you need to do. But this is overall very high on my list. Like I said, if, uh, if you ride somewhere that's not just cold and dry but may have some moisture thrown in, this would be very high on my list. Um, I think in order of, well, I can't even say in order because <clears throat> it really depends on the temperatures that I'm riding in. But for me, when I go out, I'll, <laughs> I'll get made fun of first off. <clears throat> but second, I will regularly go out with two or three sets of gloves on me. Um, I'll have the gloves that I'm wearing and then I'll have two gloves in my hip pack, um, pockets, whatever. And essentially I will judge my glove selection based on the temperature, right? Like a lot of times I'll start out and the ride's 34 to 36 degrees. So I will start out with, you know, either those, the Fox UTV Legions or the 100% Briskers. <clears throat> if it's a little warmer, I'll start out with the Liat Sub-Zeros. Um, after that, I will have a glove like say these Hand Ups or the Fox Ranger Waters or um, uh, another thinner, mid temperature like the Enduras is another one I'll carry as kind of like my next transition glove. And then if I think it's gonna warm up even more, I'll, I'll have just like a standard set of our kind of lone wolf gloves that, that we sell in our web store, plug plug. <clears throat> now, if um, the ride starts out in that 40 degree range, then I'll usually just start out with something like the Enduras or the Hand Ups or the, the Fox Ranger gloves, Ranger Waters uh, because I can stay pretty warm and comfortable in there <clears throat> and, and I think those will do well. Now there are a lot of other winter gloves so I think the fact that these gloves are here in this list means already that they're very high on my list and I like them and that's why I chose them. But if I had to pick my dream, I guess, layers, right, uh, of gloves, uh, the Fox UTVs and the 100% Briskers for sure, my cold weather go-tos, uh, if I'm leaving my Dekine white knuckles at home. Uh, from there, the Liat Sub-Zeros are next on my list as it would kind of just get the slightest bit warmer. <clears throat> After that, I really like the Fox Ranger uh, water gloves a lot. Really great feel, uh, pretty good mid-temperature protection. Endura's next and um, then the hand ups after that. That's kind of like <clears throat> how I would work through my gloves as the temperatures rose or 
depending on my starting temp when I went out for a ride. So hopefully seeing those gloves on and kind of moving around gave you a little bit of information, will help you sort of pick what camp you're in, uh, what sort of temperatures you're riding in, and let you pick something that might suit you best. Um, I know it's sometimes costly and uh, time intensive to go through all these gloves and find the right ones for you. So hopefully our time putting uh, all these gloves through the paces helps you out a little bit. Thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, we would love it if you subscribe to the channel and we could have you back for future videos. Thank you guys very much and we'll see you out on the trails.